In a little over a week's time, Microsoft 365 Copilot, which was announced with great fanfare back in March, will become generally available. Following that announcement, I proclaimed here in a video that Microsoft had just won work. So now, the best part of a year later, as we start this final countdown to the first Microsoft 365 Copilot release, let's review what we know about it, who it will be available for, and whether I still think this is the product that will win work for Microsoft. With AI announcement after AI announcement throughout this year so far, the new capabilities that we've been enjoying in tools like Bing Chat have been conspicuously absent from the apps we use every day like Teams and Outlook. This is because the path from announcement to release for Microsoft 365 Copilot has been a long one. And in that period from March until now, many of us have gained a huge amount more experience in how generative AI can impact our work every day, whether from using ChatGPT or something like Bing Chat Enterprise or new capabilities in other apps, many of which now have some sort of generative AI powered feature. While Microsoft 365 Copilot has languished in an ongoing early access program where very few have had the opportunity to be hands-on with it, it seems pretty much every other software vendor, from Adobe through to Zoom and everything in between, has been racing to get AI features into our hands. Some of them have proved useful, while many appear more for the benefit of being able to put out marketing that claims some generative AI integration that actually enhancing the product in any clear way. Microsoft 365 Copilot is poised to bring generative AI capabilities to where we do work. While bringing new features like Microsoft 365 Chat that will provide you with assistance across your Microsoft 365 data, Copilot will also bring unique AI experiences to each of the familiar Microsoft 365 apps. You'll be able to summarize your messages, to take the pressure off with long or complex threads. You'll also be able to interact with other services through a rich plugin model and add or access data in third party services directly from your Copilot requests. You'll be able to use Copilot to draft text, whether that's an email reply or something much more complex based on documents or other assets from across your organization. And then when you've got the document written, Copilot will be there to help you keep editing and revising until it's perfect for your needs. And beyond text, Copilot will help you with the visual design of your work, whether thinking about image generation or just applying branding to your documents or presentations consistently. Copilot has a feature set that gives it the potential to revolutionize how knowledge workers do work in a way that is simply unmatched by other services. What makes Microsoft 365 Copilot eminently more exciting than a generate text button in Squarespace isn't that Microsoft has access to AI technology that no one else can use, but that it has access to data and contextual understanding about how you work and what you do that is potentially unmatched by any other vendor other than perhaps Google if you're on Google Workspace rather than Microsoft 365. Thanks for watching. If this content is useful to you, please do hit the like button so we can share it with as many interested people as possible. And while you're down there, remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon too, so you'll know as soon as I release another video. So since last fall, you've been able to take a bunch of your texts from emails in Outlook or documents in Word or slides in PowerPoint and paste that into ChatGPT and use generative AI capabilities to get something useful back. You can ask for a summary or to use the information in the emails as the basis for a LinkedIn post perhaps, or whatever you need. This now isn't really new to us. But without taking the time to find and share that context, without giving ChatGPT or Bing Chat or Bard the emails you want to summarize, or without copying and pasting the text from the slides you want to turn into a LinkedIn post, without that step of giving the AI tool the information you want to use as the basis for its creation, it won't be able to do what you're asking of it. That process of establishing context or grounding in AI speak is one of the most important steps in getting a good response. And when it comes to dealing with complex business data, 
it can be difficult and time consuming to get the right stuff. With Microsoft 365 Copilot, Microsoft hasn't built a new AI. This isn't a revolution in the same way ChatGPT was. What they have built is actually more interesting. It's an automated context gathering machine that has access to all the business data you do. Copilot is really the combination of three products. You've got your apps that you use every day, like Outlook, Word, and Teams. You've got the data layer that drives Microsoft 365 and an AI foundation model. When you use a product like ChatGPT, you write a prompt that includes the context, it gets sent to the AI, and you get an AI response. With Microsoft 365 Copilot, there's some important extra steps. Your prompt gets pre-processed by Copilot. It then uses your Microsoft 365 data relying upon the Microsoft Graph and the new semantic index of your data to find relevant context to ground your prompt request. All that data comes together and then gets sent to the AI model. But it doesn't stop there. In the background, the AI may respond with a need for more information, and Copilot will provide it in an ongoing dialogue until the AI has the best data to give you the best response. And ultimately, it's this combination of cutting edge AI through their relationship with ChatGPT's creator, OpenAI, and this context generating machine built on top of your unique business data that is Microsoft's special source to set Microsoft 365 Copilot apart from everything else we've been using up until now. And it is for this reason that I think Microsoft 365 Copilot will help us win work. The other thing Microsoft has got in abundance that a lot of new AI startups don't isn't just access to our business data, but a really long record in how it protects it for us. We know that Microsoft puts a wall around our data so that it doesn't access it or use it for anything other than providing services to us. And we know that this wall is going to remain just as strong in the AI age. Microsoft will assure that the data Copilot sees is no more or less than the user running Copilot is able to see themselves, and won't use any of the data shared for AI requests for any other purpose than surfacing those requests. While Microsoft 365 Copilot is exiting early access and becoming generally available, for many businesses, this won't mean any change at all. That's because Microsoft has created a rather onerous set of stipulations for those who will be able to purchase Copilot when it's released November 1st. This includes a 300 seat minimum order and commitment for a year of service, a purchase that at list price is over $100,000. There also is not expected to be any free month trial like we've seen from products like Teams Premium. So even if you do meet those requirements, unless you've been part of the early access program, you'll be essentially buying sight unseen. I'll be releasing a follow-up video to this one looking specifically at the issue of why these stipulations might be in place. So make sure you're subscribed so you get to see that. At this time, we are unsure when Microsoft 365 Copilot will be available for smaller purchases and whether in the future businesses will be able to trial it before signing up for a year's commitment, which is currently the case for the vast majority of Microsoft's products. Even when it is available to all, its price tag at $30 a month might appear as a barrier. This is not going to be a cheap product objectively, but as I've shared here before, when you think about the fact that this targets office-based knowledge workers, it really is a tiny fraction of what you're probably paying someone in that type of role. If a co-pilot license makes them more productive, or even just gives them a better work-life balance, meaning they're less likely to quit, your investment of less than $400 a year extra in that worker is probably well worth it, and broadly comparable to low-end benefits or tools you already invest in without even blinking an eye. Even if you're not able to get my Microsoft 365 Copilot on November 1st, there's still a lot you can continue to do in your business to get yourself AI and Copilot ready. Most Microsoft 365 licensed tiers already have access to Bing Chat Enterprise, which provides many similar generative capabilities to Microsoft 365 Copilot, while also protecting your data to some extent just without the underlying data access to everything in your Microsoft 365 tenant. The basics of using a tool like Bing Chat Enterprise or Microsoft 365 Copilot will be the same from the perspective of your team's understanding of AI. They need to understand prompting, 
but they also need to understand issues like why AI tools don't always give the right answer, how to sense check AI generated responses, and how issues like privacy, transparency, and ethics are extremely important when it comes to using AI. These are foundational skills and knowledge that your team members will need in the AI age, whether you deploy Microsoft 365 Copilot or not. My upcoming book, Who's in the Copilot Seat, is a guide for these issues and many more when it comes to the impact AI will have on smaller businesses. If you're interested in getting a copy, there's a link below to register for updates. You'll be among the first to know when it's released, and you'll also get access to unique enhancements to help you get the most value from your purchase. The other place where you can prepare is with your data. Ultimately, an AI tool with access directly to your data is always going to offer shortcuts that just copying and pasting into ChatGPT won't. And if our primary concern is to enhance productivity and minimize busy work, this is an important place we'll achieve both of those aims. But how you go about managing your data and your data governance is vital. A tool like Microsoft 365 Copilot will simply have access to everything in Microsoft 365 the user running the request has access to. No ifs, buts, or exceptions. If your users can see too much and just ignore it on the Honor system, Copilot won't know. If your users can see too little and have to refer to that printout on Sandra's desk at the other end of the office, Copilot isn't going to look on Sandra's desk. There are so many reasons to get this right, even if you have no interest in Microsoft 365 Copilot. But if you want Microsoft 365 Copilot to work for you, it's one more reason to give this issue some of your time. Are you in an organization that's going to be buying Microsoft 365 Copilot on November 1st? Are you in an organization that would like to buy it, but you can't because you don't meet the stipulations? Let me know down in the comments. And if you're interested in those criteria that are stopping you from buying Microsoft 365 Copilot and why they might be in place, make sure you're subscribed so you get to see that video that will be coming out next. Thanks for watching through to the end. I hope this video has been useful to you. Until the next one, bye bye.